Good morning and welcome to today's Daily Post. This is the 7th of September and we've got some scriptures and thoughts and ideas that we hope will help you through the day. We begin with the scripture from Psalm 22 and verse 4. Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted and thou didst deliver them. If you're reading the Bible in here today, we're going to move on through Proverbs 1 and 2 and 1 Corinthians chapter 16. The thoughts of the day, happiness is not in our circumstances, but in ourselves. It is not something we see like the rainbow or feel like the heat of a fire. Happiness is something we are. If you really want something, you can figure out how to make it happen. God owes us nothing, but gives us everything. The motivational thought for the day, good fathers not only tell us how to live, they show us. And on this day, in 1927, Philo Farnsworth demonstrated the first use of TV in the city of San Francisco. In 1936, on this day, the Tasmanian tiger animal became extinct, officially. In 1940, the German Air Force Blitz on London began. It was the first day of 57 consecutive nighttime blitzes. And in 1999, on this day, a 5.9 magnitude earthquake rocked Athens, rupturing a previously unknown fault and killing 143 people. It injured more than 500 and left 50,000 people homeless. And in 2017, on this day, an 8.2 on the Richter scale earthquake hit southwest of Pipijian. Pijijiapan, Pijijiapan in Mexico. Sorry about that. Apologies to the Mexicans. It killed at least 90 people. It was the strongest Mexican earthquake in a century. In 2019, the Indian Space Agency lost contact on this day with its Chandrayaan-2 moon lander, just two kilometres from landing on the moon's surface. Obviously, they've improved a bit because they just managed to get it to, to land on the surface this time. The personal story of the day, SALT, S-A-L-T. It's common, cheap, and used around the world. It has stirred up wars, led to establishment of trade routes, and paid the salaries of soldiers. Today, it serves chiefly as a preservative and a flavouring. What is it? It's that crystalline substance we call salt. Jesus, who was a master of using ordinary things to illustrate spiritual realities, talked about salt when he was teaching his disciples how they were to serve as agents of his kingdom. He said in Matthew 5 and verse 13, You are the salt of the earth. If we think of salt as a preservative, we can assume Jesus wants us to prevent moral decay in our society, promoting spiritual truth. And if we think of salt's ability to enhance flavour, we can be sure he wants us to help people discover the joy of knowing and living with the power of the Holy Spirit. Salt stored away on a shelf is not fulfilling its function. In a similar way, unless we are actively at work sharing God's life-enhancing truth, we are not serving as spiritual salt. After all, the place for salt is in the stew of human activities. Instead of just criticising the corruption of our culture, as well as the flatness of the life of so many people endure, let's get into the stew for we are the salt of the earth. Amen. The devotional thoughts of the day. The first, 
the beauty of who we are, not how we look. The scripture is from 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 4 with references from Song of Solomon chapter 1 verses 9 to 14. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of great price. Actress Elizabeth Taylor was known for her love of jewellery, diamond jewellery. On one occasion she was attending a social event where one of the guests pointed out the large diamond that she was wearing. That's a bit vulgar, the woman remarked. Taylor offered to let the woman try the ring on, and as the woman gazed at the diamond on her own finger, Taylor commented, There, it's not so vulgar now, is it? Is it wrong for us to use cosmetics and jewellery to enhance our appearance? Christians disagree on this point. Several New Testament passages warn believers not to make the outward appearance the primary focus of their beauty. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verses 9 and 10, for example, the Apostle Paul says that he wants women to dress modestly, with decency and propriety, and not with braided hair or gold or pearls or expensive clothes, but rather with good deeds appropriate for women who profess to worship God. The Apostle Peter makes a similar point, reminding his readers that the primary source of their beauty does not lie in expensive jewellery or fine clothing, but in character. This was how the holy women of the past made themselves beautiful, as we're told in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 45. The primary point in these passages is positive rather than negative. We can see that it's appropriate to take steps to enhance our physical appearance. The groom in today's verses expresses his appreciation for the bride's efforts to beautify herself. In particular, he mentioned earrings of gold studded with silver and a necklace of fine jewellery. In her response, the bride adds perfume to the list of items. But scripture makes it clear that this kind of beauty has limits. Beauty that is based primarily on external appearance can be misleading. Charm is deceptive. The author of Proverbs warns, quote, And beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears God is to be praised, in chapter 31 and verse 30 of Proverbs. Cosmetics, jewellery and clothing may rightly add something to our appearance for a time, but in the end, they cannot provide true beauty. Godly character is the only source of unfading beauty. Praise the Lord. Again, maybe some uh, harsh things to think about there, but the Bible uh, tells us what God wants of us. The second thought, being left behind. Scripture from John 3 and verse 15 that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. It's hard when we lose a loved one, knowing that we will never see them in this life again. We've been left behind to deal with life without that person, whether it be a spouse or a child, a parent, a relative or a friend. It hurts very much knowing how much we love them, not to be able to tell them that anymore, or cuddle, or kiss them, to talk with them when we want to. A friend attended a viewing of a family member at a funeral home recently and noted the sad faces of those she had left behind, a husband, two sons, and several grandchildren. They'll never be able to see her in this life again, and it registered on those faces. Life does not seem to be fair at some times, taking the ones we love. Some lash out at God, wanting to know why he takes someone we care for. However, each of us faces this final physical ordeal, and each of us will no doubt leave behind someone to grieve our death. But the one thing we should be guarding against is being 
quote, left behind, unquote, when the Lord returns for his people. Knowing that you have been redeemed from the curse of the law, as we read in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13, through the blood of Jesus Christ, and that you have received life everlasting by accepting his free gift of the Holy Ghost through faith in Jesus Christ. Some more sobering thoughts which are very important. The facts of the day. The average silkworm cocoon contains about three to 400 metres of silk thread. In Cleveland, Ohio, it is illegal to catch mice without a hunting licence. <laughs> the closing thought. Who sees us in our weakness and loves us anyway? The answer to that is very, very important. Praise him. Thank you for being with us today. We do hope that today's thoughts and ideas uh, and scriptures will be helpful and uh, challenging perhaps and uplifting. And we hope that you'll join us again tomorrow. In the meantime, may the Lord bless your day. Bye for now.